get much better than this, so we're actually going to get started because stuff. <laughs> because reasons. 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 I'm, uh, my name is Mickey Ray. I am the executive officer of the Black Widow Company, which is a 10 year gaming community. Um, I'm also one of the managing directors of Play to Give Back, which is a recent charity that we stood up to really address veterans issues and children's causes at the same time. And we're just going to go right down the road and have people introduce themselves. Uh, I'm Kim Miller. I'm another managing director of Play to Give Back and a member of the UBC. I'm Ron Russell. Uh, member of Black Widow Company's uh, commands record. My name's Steve Machuda. Um, if I'm Royce Supply Route, we're the one out there in the lobby terrorizing the civilians and push up companies. <laughs> <laughs> James Armstrong, and I uh, am an admiral in System United Navy, which is the Guild for Star System. Awesome. Not a real admiral! <laughs> <laughs> Not a real admiral. <laughs> 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 We also have a, a friend of ours on his Mark Barlett from Maple Gamers. Mark, you want to come up and hang out with us, man? Sure. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I think Chris is Mark Barlett. You can have a right chair. Now. It is Mark Barlett. Yes. <laughs> Only doing it for two years, you're going to try to call him. It is on a recent training that corrected somebody like that. Good night. Good night. Good night. Barlett. Anybody else want to join the table? <laughs> yeah, go ahead and have your cards. Out of the direction, everyone. Alright, so we're basically just going to roll it. This will be obviously very conversational because it's great. <laughs> um, so we're going to go over just four, four main topics and then really we want, kind of wanted this to be a conversation. Um, we don't have a lot of industry represented here. But the focus of, of this, this is the second Veterans Gaming panel that we've done. The first one was on veteran impact on the gaming industry. This one is focused on philanthropy, how we give back, why we give back, and how our charitable efforts in the gaming community kind of impact the community as a whole. So that is the conversation that we're going to have. And we're going to start with... So the first question, the first topic is what really sparks um, the desire of virtual communities to engage in charitable activities? What's the catalyst in, for gamers, uh, veteran gamers specifically, to say, hey, let's do something to give back? I guess I'll start. Since uh, Black Widow Company, obviously better founded, uh, better known, there, we have a large percentage of veterans within our organization, and with that comes the willingness to give. You know, they, a lot of our members have already served, and some of them are currently serving or formerly served. So, with that, when they come to you know our community, uh, there's always that willingness to want to further you know that commitment. You know, they're still wanting to give whether it's to their own community or to those other things that we find uh, that we think are you know, things that we want to support. I would just, uh, I'm not a veteran, but we do have a lot of veterans in Systems United Navy, a lot, and a lot of active duty members. Um, everybody just wants to have a chance to actually, you know, care about what they're actually doing, and, you know, for gaming, we're also human. We just want to give back something to, you know, in our project. Uh, we spend a lot of money on our games and give some of it, hopefully, to good causes that, that help the world a For us, the military uses gaming to recruit, and a lot of people that are in the military are gamers, but we also have a lot of people coming back who didn't leave in the same condition which they, that we ship them off with. So um, we really work hard to make sure that gamers with disabilities are able to kind of jump back into the game and make sure that they're playing. Moving right along. So, one of, the, one of the things that we found, especially in BWC and the other organizations that we've dealt with, is that that, that whole theory of continuation of service, um, the, our whole organization and our whole kind of the way we go about doing the business of gaming is predicated on this continuation of service and wanting to give back. So we look for, for ways that we can do that at every, every step, and the response so far has been pretty amazing. Now the second way is kind of into the, uh, into the next one, and hopefully you can be able to speak to this. Uh, how do you actually effectively manage the charitable efforts of a, of a virtual organization? Got people. <laughs> West Coast. <laughs> yeah, this is you don't. West Coast, East Coast. Hurting cats. Yes. Hurting generous cats. So that's the first thing I've heard. 
Sorry? Laser <laughs> cannon tools. Um, I think the first thing you have to understand is that it is very much like herding cats. Um, but you also have to make sure that... So if you give to something, say, maybe Cancer Society, you send 10 bucks in, you don't know what happens to that. You assume it's going to a good cause. Um, you hope that your $10 is enough. And something that's a little smaller than that, you can make it very clear that if all you have to donate is a dollar or five dollars, um, that that matters to us. And you make people feel like they're important and, and they're more willing to step up. Um, but you also have to be really transparent with just about everything and be willing to log on to the forums and have 50 items from people asking some really crazy questions and be willing to respond to all of them on personal level. Nice. We turned items off. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's really said to herd cats, it definitely is that. And, uh, right now, <clears throat> last time I was on this panel, it was just myself, uh, running operations supply now. We've since expanded a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> we're starting to get out there about our organization. We've since been growing, grabbing people left and right, and uh, it's very chaotic. I mean, even with the volunteers, the folks who are just calling up or writing, just going, hey, I want to help, how can I help? I have a pickup truck in, you know, Boise, Idaho. How can, what can I do? And it's, I don't know, I'm sure we can figure something out, give your information, we'll, we'll We'll get back to you. We'll talk to this guy. We're slowly building out a map of individuals across the country that we're working with. But it is very much just you do the best you can on what you got with who you have. And it's, we're starting to stack people in our deck, and people are starting to come together. Like we've got people in Boston who help us out with our booth, you know, things like that. To know the area, it's it's coming together. It takes a lot of effort. This is the more people you have, the crazier things get. The bigger you get, things get even better. You're not going to everybody all the time. You just got to keep you know, one foot from the other kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. so. You have to really enjoy what you're doing. Absolutely. It's got to be passionate about it. Can't get annoyed. I also think you really have to kind of delegate as well. As your organization grows, it's really important to find volunteers that have really stepped up and are consistently part of your team and start handing things off to them and trusting that they're going to do right because I think a lot of us started as one-man organizations, and you know, the last thing a one-man organization ever wants to do is succeed, because that is the quickest path to failure, because you can't handle it. So you have to have, you have to start grooming people to be there with you, or or you're going to fail always. We're just a, uh, we started out as a gaming guild, and uh, we don't even um, we don't have a game to play yet because we're star citizen guilds. <laughs> Uh, but it, it, it's already, you know, we did a few uh, charity fundraiser things, but it, it's keeping track of all the accounting, keeping track of all the basics, you know, the plopping and tackling of the business actually takes a lot more time and effort than a lot of people realize. It, 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 right, it's, ask, it's answering questions. It's also figuring out what the questions are to ask. Like, how do I get money A, you know, from A to B? How do I, you know, the, how do I collect this? How do people pay? How do, you know, the simple stuff. Uh, and for an organization just starting out, that can be daunting. Uh, but with the right people helping out, it becomes a lot easier. And so you just ask for help everywhere you can get it. And this event right here for us has been, Mark was talking about individuals and finding delegation to be able to step back and let somebody else take charge. And that sounds easy, but it is absolutely you, you live and die by your organization's reputation. You give it to somebody else and you say, take charge of what I, I can't do all this, you need to take care of X, Y, and Z. You were saying, I am trusting you're not going to get on Twitter and start flashing dick news. Wait, that's an option. That is an option. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that was an option. It's not an option. So, oh, okay, no, thanks. So, uh, it's bad. So, this, it's bad. so could, this convention has been a, a great learning experience for myself. I've never done something this big before. We've had a lot of people who have come out of the woodwork saying, I want to help, and then when push comes to shove, they're not the superstar that we thought we were. We had some people who have come out of nowhere and really stepped up and surprised the hell out of me. But those people are going to you know, keep moving forward with it. To that point, real charity is hard. I mean, real charity is hard. It's great to write a check, and if anyone wants to write a check for me, um, I will take it. But like, going to the next level, and so I like, I work full time for my organization, but I get paid zero. Um, I work for the Department of Homeland Security during the day, and I come home, and me and that gentleman right there in the tank, um, we, we work, we're talking on the phone, I mean, I talk to him more than I talk to the spouse. 
and I'm on my way soon. So we're always, but it's all for free. And a lot of people can't put that in there because you have to see the one story that someone tells you, you know, because of what you did, you changed my life. That's kind of the fuel that we, that's the fuel that fuels our car because it is not money and it's not necessarily even, quote, day-to-day -day job satisfaction. It, it's also okay, though, if all you have is, say, a week or two in the summer mm -hmm. that you want to give to somebody. You don't have to be at the top running a charity to really affect and help out. You can say, look, you know, I'm on spring break. i got four days. What can I do for you? And we are grateful for that just as much as we're grateful for someone who could not To that point, I mean, you said earlier something about, you know, whether it's $10 or $1, I think, you know, from an organizational perspective, that gives money to other organizations. Uh, we're kind of in a unique position where we're able to take your one dollar and your ten dollars and your five dollars and you make it into thousands of dollars. So you're part of a, a larger group, and even your small donation, you get to feel like you're part of something larger. And our, we do a really good job of pushing our our accomplishments to our members and it gives everybody a feeling of accomplishment and it's not their dollar, you know, it's that $5,000 or that $60,000, you know, it's an honor flight that we, you know, that we sponsor, you know, there's there's real tangible things that we get to show our membership and they, no matter what they gave, they gave something and it, it's it's really a good feeling for, for, them, for our entire member base. So what's the difference between a, a call to action, which is a very specific thing, we, we would like you to do this one thing, this one time that contributes to a greater whole and a call to service, which is we would like you to engage on a more fundamental level for a long haul. How do you actually communicate that to people that you want to engage with in your business with as a, as a charity? I think it's up to you because I have had, you know, I have failed as a leader in my own charity at times where I have not engaged someone as quickly as they want to help as often as they wanted to help. And they are someone who wants to, to have the call to service. And sometimes you can't see through the initial introduction on whether they're looking for the action of the service. And so I think you as an executive director of <coughs> your organization have to be ready for projects because when you do find that person who's ready to give them for the long haul, you have to keep them engaged or they're going to go with someone else that can engage them. That's, I've lost so many people that were good because I wasn't ready to feed their thirst for giving. True, but there are only so many hours in the day and it comes down to if that person is deadly serious about getting involved, they'll wait a little while. I mean, I'm not saying just blow them off. I'm oh, no, I agree, but they'll wait to an extent. Of when you're a one-man operation like we were for the longest time, you know, my, my idea of fast is I'll get to you in the next two weeks. Well, because I was at one time just a one-man operation, you know, trying to pay my mortgage. And these are we get a lot of people, especially in the veteran community, who are they're, they're ready to go right now. Let's rock. What, what, what mountain are we climbing right now? <laughs> and I think that's what we found coming at it from a community perspective is that you know instead of a a charitable effort creating a community around it, we're kind of doing it backwards. Where we have this established community, and then from that we're spawning the philanthropy. So we've already got it built in boots on the ground. Kind of been nice for us. I was going to say, I don't think it's a disadvantage. I think it's almost advantageous for us because, you know, we get to see those people that want to put in the time, you know, those, you know, members that have been proven, you know, that have stayed the course, that have hung out with us for a year, and, and now they're willing to say, hey, I'll do help with that. You know, hey, that's somebody we can count on because they've been doing X, Y, and Z for our, for our membership already, so we can probably count on them to lead this in Austin, Texas, or California. We have members spread throughout the United States, so um, I think that's, you know, that's something we're going to yeah, worldwide, actually. So yeah, we did stuff in Germany as well, so uh, you know, it's kind of nice that we're able to fall in on that infrastructure. It's just kind of been a, Mark and I, yeah, Mark and I have absolutely done it backwards. I'm totally jealous of just having this. Well, see, so what I'm to, 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 to that point, though, you guys do differently. So you're, you just do something, and then you fund something else. Yeah. I'm working on what that something else is. Right. So like I'm looking at a van project. So well, I, for instance, looked at you and said, hey, it's $200,000. What you haven't seen is the 35 moving parts 
or to your call, and you're, you have you have all these you have all these moving parts. All you really have to do is you're just one moving part. We like to call you the lubrication that makes the machine go. And so we're lubricating. <laughs> <laughs> but we're building the machinery though right. to actually bring the mission or whatever the objective is to the to the table. I mean, it's almost like logistics to me, you know. And it's that's the part where I think, oh, operation supply drop at Able Gamers. You're, you're, we're like the we're the pointy end. Right. Of the spear, oh, yeah. while you guys are actually like the shaft of the catalyst for action. Well, we need a spear, there's parts. <laughs> Taking the analogy while we're talking about it. That one sideways fast. So that's actually a good segue. So, we're talking about having boots on the ground in different parts of the world, different parts of the country. Um, we ran into something for Veterans Day where we have a, a, a game that partnered with us, um, and we did a big fundraising event. But the game has an international audience, but it was for Veterans Day, for U.S. Veterans Day. Some of the reaction to that was, was fascinating. So how do we make those types of decisions as, as charities and as communities? What do we engage in? How do we do that risk mitigation? You know, do we ask industry partners to do something specifically for us at the risk of ostracizing the rest of their community, or what's the balance there? Uh, it's really hard to strike a balance like that. I know we've been calling imperialist dogs, when we've had our, our team come out looking for help with different international communities. I mean, people really go to war with us when it comes down to helping the, the, the American war machine. So uh, it comes down to, I mean, we have, we have since stretched out to helping out our allies, but we just had one of our first uh, British supply drops go down the range that made it down very great. It helps show that we're not just focused on the United States military and helping out New Zealand as well and things like that. But it comes, at the end of the day, you cannot please everybody. You have to pick your battles. And if some guy in you know, Bolivia is upset and he's not going to donate, you just have to cut him off and focus on the mission at hand. If we're not getting his money, that's fine. You can donate to somebody else. Which chances are he wasn't going to donate to you, right? That's true. One of the benefits that we have, given the way we do things, that we do raise money for is when we had this problem, we said, hey, we understand and we hear you. Um, how can we help you raise money in your country? We can't we can't necessarily raise money for you because that can get, we've heard some horror stories about security getting involved, and, and we don't want that. I'm, I'm, I'm watching you. Um, <laughs> okay, <come on. laughs> um, but you know, we said, I can't even remember where it was, Germany, I think. We were like, well, okay, but how can we help you? How can we help you do what we're doing? in your country. And that warms things up and that opens some doors. And um, it was right about the time that the typhoon hit. So we took some of that money and we funneled it off to the to typhoon recovery as well. And, and it wasn't a, 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 an appeasement. It wasn't like, look, we can do other things as well. It just made sense. Well, we saw it as an opportunity. Hey, we can do this as well. And I think we've, we've learned lessons too. So I mean, you know, moving forward when we engage other organizations, you know, we'll prep for better, I think, you know, we'll, we'll say these are some of the pitfalls we run into if we do this, you know, prepare them for that backlash that they may see dealing with a veteran type organization, so. It's tricky though, and I know it was tricky for me as a, as a veteran to, to listen to that backlash and to feel that backlash, like here I am trying to do something good for people that I know for a fact are very deserving, and yet I have this whole other part of the gaming community saying what you're doing is wrong, what you're doing is evil, and I know how to put my objective pants on for that. Um, because the instant reaction to that is, okay, you know, unless you've kind of been there and done that, you don't really have the right to tell me what I'm doing is wrong. Now I'm trying to help people who've been on the sharp end. So it's tricky. You've got an international, you've got an international crew here. Did you have a little bit of uprising you know, when you're helping U.S. students? So, not within ourselves. We had one guy in our community, and it's a community of, of you know, almost 8,000 people. We had one guy who kind of lose his shit. Those are good numbers, right? There. Right. You're only losing one guy, it's, uh, but it's industry, though, because we're yeah. we're all capable of saying, hey, that one guy in you know in Peru, you know, or Bolivia, if he begs off, okay, we don't give his five dollars. But we're talking to Sony, or we're talking to Riot, or we're talking to Todd Perry Games, and we go, hey, we want to do an event with you and it's focused on veterans, then suddenly they have a decision to make. How much skin are they willing to put in that game? 
And we found out last year that they're, they're willing to back that. They're willing to say, you know, we're an American company. We're going to honor American veterans on Veterans Day. And there's no downside to that. So that was actually pretty gratifying. The results of that were kind of nice. You also got to kind of have thick skin, too. You can't get upset every time you see somebody tearing up our soldiers, just like you can. Internet. It's the internet. It hurts. You can't. It hurts. Like, but you also can't, you can't burst in. Like, we did the, the first real charity event that we did was a 24-hour gaming marathon for St. Jude's. Um, and I spent most of the prep of that in tears. Every time I just see the story, I'm like, oh my god, these poor kids. Um, you have to develop a thick skin and you have to kind of step back and say, I understand these people aren't happy or I understand they can't save the world, but this is what I can do. One of the other, say one of the other challenges that we had is, you know, we had one guy, you know, get upset and with us for doing what we were doing, but trying to manage the backlash from our veteran-based group, you know, trying to say, hey, guys, it's not, you know, this is this is a good thing. Let everyone else handle it. You're not going to help, you know, you're not going to help the, the issue here if you're going in there supporting, oh, yeah. supporting this, you know, everybody in our organization wanted to stand up and tell everyone else that they were wrong. So we have to manage our own membership in that way because you know, they care a lot about you know, what they've done and what they're doing. So. so how do we pick and choose what to engage in? Mark, this is one for you. How do, how do you actually pick your opportunities? What, what criteria in your head do you go, okay, is this an opportunity that's going to be beneficial short term, long term? How do you go about parsing that out? Um, well, I mean, I have a really strong team. Steve is, is my right hand man. Um, but I think the first thing I ask is the time sink and then the ramp is what we call it. You know, um, we actually had for Veterans Day a really awesome company call us and say, I have a venue booked and I have people waiting to come into a door, in the door in downtown Manhattan. All you have to do is get here in two days. And I had to say, I, I'm, I, I, can't, I can't help you because that's, I, that ramp is too steep. So, I mean, so for us, it's really, it's a resource, it's not a money thing, it's a time thing. Because the time is the most valuable. I mean, for this PAX presentation, we started four months ago to put Pachinko for Charity together. And we were still, like, frantic last week. Like, pretty much frantic until we got in the car. <laughs> and we finally said, screw yeah. it, what's done is done. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, 100%, you know. South by Southwest, but it was you and I both, of us, we were both at yeah. South by Southwest just a couple of weeks ago. It was, it, and it's one of those things where you're just like, I hope I have everything. I hope it's, it's literally like jumping out the plane, hoping your shoes back properly. And 90% of the time, you're going you're gonna to hit the ground, you're going to be okay. It's just like, I hope this all works out. It all did, it all worked out. We had some hiccups in the beginning. But, you know, I mean, Thank God for that FedEx store. Right? I spent some money there. <laughs> <laughs> So how do we go about measuring success? So we identify opportunities, we weigh the risk, we go, here's the time sink, here's the ramp. How do we go about measuring level of effort versus success? And I want to use the term ROI because that, that seems almost too clinical for this, but how do we go ahead and engage that at the end of any given quarter or even at the end of any given day? What do we count as successes? My successes right now are how big my business is. Because when I first started off, we were having, we were not me, and I always use the real me. Um, when I first started off, uh, I was having opportunities come along from organizations that liked what we were doing, but they would fall through. They were small, nothing, not a big deal, but at the time they were very large. And by Veterans Day of last year, we're having organiz large organizations where I have to sign NDAs before they can even tell me what the name is, and they're going to get, uh, you know, advertising. Super Bowl and all kinds of crazy stuff, you know, they're talking about. So, success for me is that our misses are getting larger and larger, and eventually something's going to hit. We'll get to that point where this is the year where something's going to hit. So, I don't know where the success I think the rooster team attachment right now, I think us going down to Austin and working with them for Ford Hood, I think that's going to be a huge get for us. So, I'll be interested to see where that leads us. Yeah, it's literally one day at a time. I don't know what's going to come through that door at any minute. We'll see. I think, with, I think maybe you'll agree, um, Stephen, that I, 
I mean, our successes, you know, if you go back to ROI, ROIs are real bad. <laughs> but I will say, I mean, like for me, when I did, uh, when I'm able to fulfill the grant, I mean, like one of the things that just like warmed the popples of my heart was we had a Navy veteran who really got messed up, who said, I need some custom gaming equipment because my son is 14 and want to play Call of Duty together, and I can't. Forget that I forget how much my organization raised last year. That one day, that one moment when I said approved, made it all. It made it all. And so, like you know, we're putting out grants and we're we're sending out, fortunately for us, thousands of dollars and getting people sending pictures of them like gaming and playing. And am I ever going to get a return on investment that's really equal to the value of the time and effort I put into it? Oh no. But am I really going to bed sleeping at night? Yeah, I am. James, from a community perspective, how do you how do you gauge you know success for your members? You know, what makes it worth it when you guys step up and engage in an opportunity? That's easy. It's just it, people like doing it. It's you, you you like being part of our community because you're doing something good for our, for people that you don't know. I mean, I'll never see anybody. At least you get to actually see some people and talk with them. I'll never get to see the kids uh, that we helped. We'll never get to, you know, hear about it. But that said, we get to read the stories and see how those, you know, how that's impacted their lives. And said, we've been a small part of that, and hopefully we can be a larger part of that going forward. And every little item along the way, um, each, you know, dollar that comes in uh, when we run an event is precious, you know. And, it's just fun. You know, it's fun. So it, it makes you feel good. Uh, as good as winning any game. Right. Should we feel guilty though if we use that as a selling point for our communities to say, yes, we play games, we do all these things, but look at all these other good things we do as well. Absolutely. Why? Okay. Because <laughs> there's been backlash on, on that, that, okay, you guys are just doing these things so you can, as a recruiting tool, so you guys can just pull in more, more bodies. So you're recruiting people that help people out. Oh my sounds, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> recruiting people that want to be helpful. I did get shit. I remember somebody was like, oh, now you're going to be giving magic cards to homeless people. Is that what we're doing? I was like, come on. Because like, again. Sure, know, if they want magic cards. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a team in Somebody call it. But um, it's, it's one of those things where you say, you're sending video games to soldiers, and of course, everybody jumps on board. Like, Why don't you give that to homeless people? that money for cancer research and yada yada yada. It's like, first off, probably not a soldier. Secondly, we don't understand some shows. So, uh, we do the best we can. Yeah, it's, 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 I need to be a PR trainer. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 anyway. There's always going to be another charity, another cause, and we've, we've struggled out with that in our community where we say, okay, we're doing this event. You know, you get 10 guys that come up and say, well, why not this, or why not this, or why not that? Um, and our response is, we'll add to the list and you know, we'll see how much good we can do there and what we can do down that path. But we can't do all the things. All things. I mean, we just, we just can't. There's but if we say that, I mean, we've, we, so, you know, we, we do a lot of veterans work because, you know, wasn't clear. I'm actually a veteran from the first Gulf War. Um, and uh, we do a lot with children. We do a lot, like, for instance, like, so the first grant we ever did was a veterans grant. And the reason why is because I was a veteran and we were finally in an organizational position where we could actually turn around and give money. Steve over there said, but that's, what about kids? And I said, no, the first one's going to be this, we're going to give to kids. And I've told people before, I agree that there are other things we can be doing, but this is the one thing I'm doing right now, what are you doing? Right, absolutely. So that's the press train that's right there. Yeah, he's the one that makes me talk this way. Uh, I used to cuss and have a good job, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Stop showing your dick on Twitter, Mark. <laughs> it's a work in progress. <laughs> it, it is a challenge, though. I mean, figuring out, you know, how to engage, when to engage. But turn it around. Turn, when someone does that to you, I turn it around and I say, this is the thing I'm doing right now. Right. What are you going to do? If you're so passionate about Wizard cards to homeless people. Go do that. I'm not special. None of us here are super special. We just took a passion and turned it into something that forwards that passion. There's no secret formula. We didn't get a letter from the government that approved us to do it. We did it and we made it happen. And anyone can do it. 
two, we sat around and said, let's do this. It might be fun for Christmas. You know, and it started out with that. And hopefully it'll expand from there. But no one told you you had, you didn't get permission from anybody. No, we just, we said, just did it. Yeah, let's do it. Figure it out. Mm -hmm. The first one that we did, it was, it was 24 marathon. And I swear, two minutes after Vicky said, all right, that's it, we're done. We had someone on TeamSpeak say, when are we doing this again? That, that was a win. That was a big moment. Are we all surprised at the lack of, uh, of competitiveness amongst, say, the people on this stage for charitable dollars in the gaming community? Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it just, it strikes me. Um, so I should call off that email stage. Yes. Well, you're good to laugh at that. You um, the things you care about. Correct. It's, it's so, I, you know, if you want to uh, donate to what we care about, you're going to donate to what we care about. You, you're not going to force, you know, me to donate to, you know, people who lack Tupperware. I don't know. Um, you know, if, 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 if you grab all the same stuff, like, yeah, it's Tupperware. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Somebody uh, it's Tupperware. So you're going to tweet that right now. It's a big charity, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, but if you, you know, you're going to find the people or the charities that you care about with your dollars. And my job is to say why my, what we're backing is good and why you should give some of your income to me. And, I, you know, if you give to me, it doesn't prevent, you know, the small amount that I, that I look for to the going that everybody else on this table. I don't think, I don't think there's a limited pool, and I think, well, there is a limited pool. I mean, let's be honest, child's play it takes it all. Um, well, I'll say it. But, um, <laughs> There's that PR train. Uh, there we go. Damn them, those sounds like No, that. I mean, they do great things, but they were for a long time the de facto gamers charity, and a lot of us here are kind of starting to get our wings, the wing beneath our wings, and, you know, but here's the thing, Child's Play's not losing any funding as we grow. Right. I don't think there's a limited pool. I think it's just like what he just said, if you believe in the cause, people will gravitate towards that cause. And some people are not going to gravitate towards my cause. Some people are going to gravitate towards Operation Supply Drop. It's okay. I just, there's more people out there. There's, charities make like a quadrillion zillion dollars. Is that a real number? Yeah, it's a real number. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it keeps going up every year. So clearly people give and they're going to give to the things they believe in. We've looked at it kind of the way we look at our gaming community is that our, our job as community is to create opportunities for people to have fun playing video games rather than present them with barriers. So you and I have talked, all of us up here have talked extensively. You know, I feel that partnering together, um, helping to fundraise for the, for the VAM project, uh, creating those opportunities for each other is the path of least resistance when it comes to overall giving back. And it's, you know, we're stronger together than we are apart. We've partnered with OSD trying to get some controllers out because you know, you were working with some disabled vets. You really tried. Yeah, you did try. You tried like that. Right, but you had the context and I had the knowledge and we tried to put it together and see what, what came of it. Right. Unfortunately, not as successful as we had hoped, but you know, we gave it an Aaron's try. Absolutely. Did you say Aaron's try? I'm an Aaron's try. Oh, man, that's embarrassing. <laughs> it's not embarrassing. That's me. <laughs> I think that also means that you don't have to do things at the level that we're currently doing it at. So if you're in a guild and you've got a small great gaming group and you've got, there was a group in Oregon that um, they did a 24 hour marathon to raise food for a local food kitchen. And I think they did like 300 pounds worth of food for a local soup kitchen. So you don't have to be at this level. You don't need to be sitting on a panel to really affect the change. But I've had a 24 hour stream for people who you know, are not as popular who's raised like $35, and, you know, and I still jump on the Twitch at the prescribed time, and anyone have any questions, and let's talk. And I mean, the, the ROI on that is not positive, but that guy's given his time, and I'm gonna respect that effort, no matter how much he raises, to like reach out and say thank you. I'll say the biggest success I ever had was Mindfine last year. So Mindfine did the Mindfine for Able Gamers, and that's a 72 hour um, pure Minecraft. I mean, it's a tough one. And like in the middle of day two, I had their address because they had to fill out some paperwork. I sent pizza. Like I picked up the spot and my own pizza, my own credit card, sent pizza to Arizona. And when they knocked on the door, they freaked out. They're like, oh my God, Able Gamer sent us pizza. $35 worth of pizza. I'm totally stealing that, but that's awesome. No. <laughs> 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 that's $1,700. But they were shocked. 
shop that we acknowledge them with pizza. That's, that's awesome. Like that. Although it goes a long way. So what's next for, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and just talk for the next half hour with our massive audience here. Um, <laughs>
printer, things like that. But we've decided this isn't working. It's not a sustainable model of helping people. So um, we actually were also going to release our thing, but our stuff did not come together in time. But we're um, starting a new project called Driving Home Accessibility. And the idea is that we've got everything logistically ready to build a full-size mobile lab where we can take it across the country to children's hospitals and veterans' hospitals and long-term care facilities and nursing facilities where we can then turn around and get people to know exactly what kind of equipment they need to get back into the game. And then if our funding stream looks right, give them that equipment. So um, we've, we've got a 12-month plan to launch that. So we've got for like starting today, we hope to be able to have something to present here at PAX next year and then roll it across the country to E3. And that's 200 grand, so if anyone has a check, <laughs> make it out to the Able Gamers Foundation. It kind of ties into what we're doing the rest of the year. Is projects like this, a couple of people that we've talked to here that are working on a new con or working on a new project, and we say, great, let's talk. How can we help you? It's kind of exciting. It is going to be good stuff. And we're absolutely going to do some uh, amazing fundraising that project because that is a good And we'll have BWC boots on the ground all across the country. So. Alright, we've got about 20 minutes left. What do you guys want to know about what we're doing? Sue? So, what are you guys fiddling with up there? Oh, badges. badges. <laughs> I've got some plenty of bad badges up here. I'm going to want to I'll take some pictures to put on Twitter later. Badges. <laughs>
so it's great that we are actually on a panel like that already. I was like, oh, because I can just ask this question to you guys as a group. But um, what would you say to those people who want to take that step to become that NGO or that other nonprofit, for whatever cause they're supporting? Like, what advice would you give to them? Uh, bro, just real quick, build a team. Because yeah. um, Mark alluded to this earlier, if you go with yourself, do that, you know, army of one approach to it, the worst thing that can happen is you get successful instantly and people respond in a huge fashion because then it literally it is just you sitting there going, I cannot do all these things. So build a team, do your homework on the legalities of everything. Uh, CIG handed us a, a $65,000 check last year and went, what are we going to do with this? Um, I'm not catching this. You know, so the whole process of incorporation, the 501, you see, I mean, just really all the moving parts, do your homework first. Because that six months of the way you do your homework and build your team, you're not going to lose your passion. And you're really not going to lose, you know, unless the sky is falling and raining money on your head, you're not going to lose any huge opportunity. While you take the time to learn what you need to know to be successful, jumping with both feet is great, kind of. Jumping in with both feet, knowing what you're doing, and having sure steps after you hit the deck, and that's the way to go. That would be my recommendation. To add to that, though, like, also, like, if you don't find an organization that does what, for lack of a better word, turns you on, create it. Because I had a need in my family that built my organization. I was, I was thrust into it. And, but I was excited. So, like, if you, if you, if you do something that you're really passionate about, do push-ups. Ease <laughs> your face. If you do something that's really, really passionate about, you you don't also have to be big. Like I do very small charities that do really amazing things in very small local communities, and they're making a big difference locally. We're all kind of trying to make a difference nationally and internationally. But if 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 wizard cards to homeless people is your thing, make that your thing. Do it. No one's stopping you. Don't get discouraged. You know, you may not. It may not be that thirty people jump on board. Yes, I want to do this. It may be it you. It may just be you for the longest time. But don't give up. If you're really passionate about it, keep at it. Something will break. The other thing is, you need to have a passion. You can't fake it. If you suddenly decide, like, if you see that there are probably people out there who see the idea as a charity, like, hey, I could probably get a following, or I could probably make some money, or I could probably just trip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, they get in it for the wrong reasons. I don't know why, but they, the idea is you really have to love what you're doing. Because everybody up here is blood, sweat, and tears every day trying to make their thing something important and impactful. And if you don't, if you don't really believe in it, either, you will you, it, you, yeah, first off, it won't work. Second off, you won't believe in it. You won't put the time or energy into it that you need, and that it needs to succeed. I think most of us have all got full-time jobs, and had lives. But I'm honestly, I've had lives. But I'm honestly, I've quit able for years ten times this year for ten minutes at a time because I just something's frustrated me and I just feel like, err, right, Steve? I'm just like, err, I'm going to go play a game for tonight. Leave me alone. You get to play games? No, I don't. I have actually had fantasies of a nuclear holocaust just for the idea where I wouldn't have to check my email for a game. Or it's because it's just like you can ask to just turn it just turn everything off. Every day off. I don't have any idea of how to, what forms I need to fill out at this point, which is, you know, I'm, I, so as soon as it's all them, what do I fill out at this point? Our four ones he threw came from, we stole the Urban League. They posted two sample, what is it, 1170 yeah. whatever. So they posted two samples, and I literally wrote ours by going, well, they said this, so I'm going to type something that looks like this. And there were these great samples the about this, and I got through the first time. <laughs> and everyone was like, how'd you do that? And I'm like, I just wrote what the urban the game game. Game. But I just changed the names. <laughs> that is 100% what I just did with our licensing agreement for Indiana Lawrence. I did end up going to a lawyer because I was like, you know what, I probably don't know. Yeah, the first thing you should know. always make if you want to start a charity as a lawyer and a CPA. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Who was cheating? Uh, because we, we are, I mean, this is a veterans and gaming panel. So having that foundation actually makes it easier for us. 
You know, I can talk to Eric uh, and he'll go, yeah, I was a Marine boy. You know, so instantly, he and I, I was a Marine, but he and I instantly have a shared context that makes it a lot easier for us to talk about and be on the same page as far as, hey, we're going to do this great thing. We already have that commonality. That built-in community we found as, as veterans, is, you just, there's nothing like it. Yeah, and our, you know. our members bring, we have a very diverse group of members, so you know, a lot of us have been in the military, some of us haven't, but we have some that are lawyers, we have some that are CPAs, you right. know, they may not do the work, but they give pretty good advice, and they can point us in the right direction, and some of the things we may, or may do or may not want to do. And we're always willing to talk to people that want to start out, and say, hey, we'll spend an hour, a day, a week with you, if you've got something you're really passionate about, and you want to pick our brains, how we got from A to B, we're more than happy to do, you know, unofficial consulting kind of matter. And no matter how smart any of us are, we don't know everything. I don't know everything. Yeah, we don't know everything. Except for, except for Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say also get a mentor. Yeah, right. Find somebody who's done it already and and, and really that you click. Just Even if they're not in the same, <laughs> they, don't, they don't have to be in the same area of philanthropy at all, but they've probably stepped in it already and can tell you where the landmines are. Okay, well, I stole a question right out of my mouth because what I was going to ask you guys is if someone was to try to like equip themselves in a way to enter the field, or for example, if you were in a dream scenario looking to hire somebody to help you guys on your team, what are you guys looking for? What are the tools that they need to have? What are the skills they need to have to make an impact in your nonprofit? It depends on what I'm trying to do. Like everyone in my organization is a jack of all trades and a master of none. Yeah, but you gotta have that passion too. I, mean, I look for the jack of all trades master of at least three or four. Um, you know, because you, you at a certain point you identify very specific needs. But again, again it boils down to the, you know, I don't want to use the term lowest common denominator, but it boils down to integrity, passion, and dedication. Um, you know, for, for my military service, it's, you know, on time, on target, never quit. You know, so anyone that I meet that has that same mentality and applies that to whatever they go about doing on their our day to day, that's somebody I want on my team, and it just it just matters. But now we're, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to draw something. I didn't mean to turn that around. We're all so small, right? That like even the thought of having somebody that does just one thing really well, right, makes no sense to me because I've got I need 40 things done. Okay, and but you're not going to turn it down. I wouldn't turn it down, but I mean, he said to hire. To so hire. Yeah, right. right. I am now investing foundation money into a resource, a dedicated resource. I couldn't tell you what that did. If you gave me 100,000 and say, go hire somebody, I wouldn't even know where to start because no one person is going to bring everything I need. Right, that's true. Well, in my situation, it's kind of the opposite because I have an ace in hole in Austin. My two ICs, a business dev guy, guy's a wizard. I mean, he is accelerating, he's taking my young blood charity, and he is fast-tracked six months to a level where we're setting up meetings with Rooster Teeth and we're, you know, we've got profit sharing and war gaming and this is because this guy knows the talk. He can get on the phone and he can he can baffle people with bullshit and biz dev chat. It's, it's amazing listening to him go. Austin or uh, uh, Glenn Band <coughs> two I see. Absolutely amazing. So I, as soon as I get some money to throw at him, he's getting a paycheck. The lights which he's never seen. I think it depends on the charity, it depends on the focus. It really does. I mean, everybody's looking for something a little bit different. You know, again, we're coming at it from an angle where we have, you know, thousands of people who draw on. Um, so it's a little different for us. Yeah, question for the entire panel. Uh, what was the one moment where time stopped for you and you realized this is why I do what I do? No, I'm playing my role. I would say it was the day we ended our first event, and you actually saw, you know, so I was like, oh, we'll raise three or four hundred dollars. It was about five times that. It, you know, that's a small number in total, but it was still a really proud moment for our little organization that's growing. Um, I will say my one big, like, holy camole, I can't believe I'm privileged enough to do this was actually this really crappy expo in New Jersey that we were invited to, and no one showed up. But there was this kid in the booth two doors down to me that was born with a, an abnormal, ab, ab, I'm talking about uh, Thank you. Where his <laughs> arms 
had never grew. We had hands, we had no arms. And we were demoing Fruit Ninja, because Fruit Ninja is one of the only games a person in a wheelchair can play, because it doesn't look for anything from the belly button down on the connect. And he kept sitting there, he had perfectly working legs, and he kept trying to play Fruit Ninja, and it just wasn't working. And I was really kind of bummed, because I thought maybe I was failing. And I don't know who came up with the idea, but all of our equipment was packed in this foam. And I, someone said, give him a piece of foam. So he grabbed this piece of foam, and he held them in his hands, and he started swinging the foam around, and all of a sudden, Fruit Ninja just works. And it works stunningly. And the con was really slow. I kid you not, like 15 people showed up to this warehouse. Mm -hmm. I mean, five times bigger than this room. And he was just playing Fruit Ninja. And his mother came over and said, what are you doing? He was, shush, mom, I'm busy. And, he's <laughs> and his mother is standing there, and she just starts crying. And she starts crying. And I'm like trying to console her. And I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, he's never game before, ever. And I'm just like, stop it, don't stop it. <laughs> and I knew right then that I at least was like, holy crap. This kid is doing something amazing with stuff that I'm going to throw away in five minutes. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's cool. See now, marketing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you actually crying? Are they, no, I really, it was so, no, no, it was I so know, that, that is amazing. That is amazing. We don't have anything like that. Um, we get letters back all the time from guys getting our packages. And those are all great pictures. Great pictures. Great pictures, yeah. We've been trying to show them up on the, on the screen there at the, at the booth. Uh, but that is a pretty regular thing. There hasn't been that moment yet. I think May 19th. After the 24 hour event, I think that's going to be the. Maybe we did it. Which, so uh, I guess we'll see. We'll see. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. What was your yours? I think it was before you guys even uh, showed up. I, I uh, came to Black Hill Company a little before these guys did, and uh, there was a hurricane. And I haven't been in Black Hill Company very long, and uh, we really weren't. We're more internally focused and taking care of our members. That's kind of how we are. Our things that kind of spawn, you know, we, at first it was about taking care of our members. We have members across uh, the United States, and uh, the East Coast was hit by a hurricane, and we had some members that were in need, and the call went out, and, you know, in the blink of an eye, you know, there's several thousand dollars that's in a pool to go out to our members, and uh, I thought, this is, this is a pretty good place. This is, uh, this is where I'm going to hang my hat for a while, and I'm still here, so. What was your story? Um, so one of them was that, that after that first marathon, people said, when are we doing this again? That was a good moment. But um, I think for me, it's when we got the, the articles of incorporation for Play to Get Back. Because before then, we were kind of, you know, okay, well, let's try this, let's try that. And that paperwork came in, and the next three weeks was nonstop, but it was like, yeah, now we can really get serious. I can hear her I can hear you things. smiling through Yeah, yeah. Because it just, it just opened a door and said, all of these little things that we've been doing are going to get so much better. I think it was, uh, for me, the people that run the Honor Flight Network had a big convention in the D.C. area. Uh, and they came out in the specific hub that we were sponsoring. Um, you know, we met with that. We actually handed them a check for $25,000. I've never handed anyone a check for $25,000 before in my entire life. It seems counterintuitive to me to actually that. <laughs> <laughs> like, this feels very strange. Which is very, very strange. But give it to her, and, and apparently, you know, that doesn't happen very often. That they really struggle to put piecemeal uh, enough money together to fund these flights, and in one check, we had funded an entire flight for them. And the look on this woman's face, I mean, she almost broke down into tears. And then it just hit me, it's like, this is real. What we're doing is real. It impacts people's lives, and we're doing good things for the benefit of others. And that's what continuation of service means to me, and that's why we do what we do. So. Makes it a little easier to handle it. Kind of, but I'm still, if I'm okay. But yeah, we're taking, that's the moment where the light bulb went off, and I went, yeah, we're going to keep doing this, and we're going to impact as many people as we possibly can in this fashion, because it matters. As long as we have communities, as long as we have, we have gamers, as long as we have people who are passionate about what we do, which is everyone up here on the stage, and we'll do nothing but grow, and get bigger, and we'll do better things out there. So, thank you all for being here. Thank our very concise audience for being here as well. We have
Thank you.